Welcome to the Newfoundland Hobbyist Season 6, a program where we explore the potential and the value that can be found through exploring new hobbies and interests, through investing in your craft and in the lifelong pursuit of learning. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoy this season. There is just something so special about that. Welcome back to my workshop and we have a very exciting project coming up. Today we'll be exploring the topic of firearms. When respected properly, firearms can provide you tremendous value. And there are so many hobbies surrounding the subject. It can bring in gunsmithing, machining, leather craft, woodworking, hunting, and so much more. You could build a whole lifetime of hobby work around firearms alone. This rifle was uh, discontinued several years ago and I just picked it up in brand new condition at a shop in Ontario. It was brought in by, I believe, a collector and it's, as far as we know, in pretty much unfired condition. And it is just so beautiful. I was really set, I was looking for a new big game caliber rifle that would be more on the lines of an heirloom rifle. One to last me my days, one to pass down. I have a Savage Axis, which is, which is a beautiful rifle and performs really well. We've done some work to it. It's a really great rifle, but it just doesn't have that, uh, that heirloom quality, something that you'd like to pass down. And I'd re I really love the, the hardwood stocks. It's just something special to me over the synthetic. I know a lot of guys now would prefer the synthetic, but I really love the hardwood. And uh, I was set on the T3X, the new Tika T3X, but then I found this T3 Custom, which is a grade above and has some features and stuff that, uh, that the T3X doesn't. And I'm just so, so excited. But I've never put a round through this thing. There are some things I want to do to, to tail this out here now to make it that perfect rifle to me and uh, and get it set up. So we're gonna do that. Matte finish receiver here. Just a beautiful, beautiful rifle. See that grip cap there? Hardwood as well, rosewood I believe. The T3 cap. Just a beautiful piece of hardwood. Now this rifle comes with a little bit more of a matte finish but with some boiled linseed oil, some thyme, cloth and some friction. I've put a beautiful gloss on there, as you can see, a nice hand rubbed oil finish, which I'm really happy with. Beautiful grip, just nice. And of course, something Tika is famous for is their glassy, glassy actions. And they're so, so slick. This, this bolt just feels like something I've never experienced before. Just so little effort and it just just glides. Watch this. That's a thing, a thing of beauty. Something I really want to do with this rifle, which is gonna be the focus of today's video, is jewel our rifle bolt. And if you've never seen that before, it is a real treat. I'm gonna press the bolt release button here on the other side pull that bolt out, and this is just going to look exquisite when we're done. Okay, now here is our fully assembled bolt, and every bolt disassembles a little different, so just like that we can remove that bolt shroud. Now we're just gonna decock the bolt there like that, and this bolt handle should remove. It's kind of in a, in a dovetail here, and there it is. So it slides right out. See, it sits in a notch here, just slips right in, you can get these custom. Who knows, maybe we'll even make one of these on the mill, wouldn't that be fun? And there we go, firing pin assembly has been removed. That is pristine, look at that heat treat. 
on the, the fore end here, the firing pin assembly. Look at the heat treat lines. Now for this next part, we're clamping the bolt into my soft jaw vise. And it's very important to use a soft jaw vise for this type of work. You don't want to mar up your beautiful rifle bolt. This bolt has a lovely finish already, so I'm going to try starting with some 600 grit paper. Let's see where that gets us. See what kind of uh, divots we have left in there. Maybe I'll try a piece of 400. You know, even this is a simple, lovely addition to your rifle. If you want to do a little bit of customization work, spruce it up a little bit without all we're about to do. There's factory finish, which is kind of dull, of course. And then once we start to reveal the other side, look at that. And that's just with 400 grit paper. A very quick scuff with 400. Feels nice and slick. It's got that little bit of sheen there now. So we'll continue finishing the bolt with the 400. Move to 600, probably 800. Who knows where we'll end up. A nice upgrade, just right there alone. And here is the finish with 1000 grit sandpaper, which is just lovely. Now we're gonna give it a little buffing with some white compound, and see what that does. So here now you can see factory bolt, but polished. And you could go much further. You can still see the striations in there from the 400 grit, but we're not too worried about that. King Canada has been bringing quality machinery, tools, and equipment to the North American market for over 38 years. They offer innovative products for all applications, for the industrial and commercial setting, as well as a homeowner and hobbyist. King Canada is a sponsor of the Newfoundland Hobbyist. Now here's the part where it gets a little more serious. We have the King Industrial Vertical Mill here. This is the KC20 VS-2, so it's a variable speed. It's their second size up. They actually have one smaller than this. Now we have it set up with a rotary chuck. And what you have here is a precision milled chassis. This sits flat on your mill table. Then you have a lathe style chuck. This is a three jaw here, but you could get an aftermarket four jaw if you wanted, but it operates the same as, uh, as the same as any lathe chuck. But what's beautiful about an indexing head here is you have a number of different graduation type markings. And just watch this. Let's remove that. Look at that. So with a system like this, you can do all kinds of stuff. Now today we're gonna to be using it to grasp our bolt here. So just like a lathe, you can center it down. Just like that. Now we don't have a lot to bite onto here, obviously. So as we apply pressure on this end, this is going to get a little spongy, a little sloppy. And so we need to come up with a solution to support the end of that bolt. And I use a few different scrap materials in the shop, some brass and some aluminum. And I just, I did a quick drawing, a quick design, of what I think might work. And that's how a lot of my crafts work like this goes. You're exploring, you're, you're engineering new designs. And what I ended up coming up with was just perfect. I tapped a few threads here and we created this little beauty right here. There we go. You can see that this slides in a notch and that is slotted in there so we can adjust for height. We also have a little set screw here can see that protrudes into this center way here. Since then, I milled it at the bottom, installed some, some magnets there, so it bites onto my table. But we'll adjust this up now and add some support for our bolt. And now, 
You can put all kinds of pressure on there and it's not going anywhere. Okay, so here's how our chuck rotates. Isn't that beautiful? So smooth. And like I said, the, the incredible thing about it is that you have these precise measurements. You have these lockout knobs here so that you can fix the chuck. Then you can move a precise measurement to which I've already calculated and then it's locked out again. So, so you can really imagine all the possibilities with a unit like this. One pass has been made. So what's happening here is we choose a degree of rotation and then we will cycle our mill table along horizontally along that path. And you can pick your degree of increment of how close you want your swirls together. We'll use a grinding paste and a, and a special grinding head that I've created. And we'll just dip that grinding head down for a few seconds on the bolt just to create a very mild, shallow scratch pattern because of course we don't want to damage our bolt. So I've selected a nice simple two turns here, but you can experiment with this and create different designs, but you wanna finish one entire horizontal pass before you change your degree of rotation. And that way everything stays nice and uniform. Two hundred and forty seven circles. And that tailstock holder there that that we crafted worked exactly as I had hoped. Gotta clean this gently now because it's covered in that grinding compound. <laughs> now are you sure you're ready to see what we got done here? Because you you might need to take a seat. <laughs> this is really special. Here it is. Just look at that. Wow, this just looks. I'm blown away. It couldn't have looked better for my rifle, in my opinion. Of course, everyone has their own tastes. You guys might not like this. Some, some fellow might be watching this saying, I don't want that on my rifle. And that is just fine. But for me, for this heirloom piece, this rifle here that I want to last and to pass down one day. Wow. What do you think? An improvement? I like it. Personally, again, this all comes down to personal taste. Let's get this bolt reassembled so we can see it in the firearm. Okay, we're going to be seeing it for the first time together here. I haven't put the bolt in the gun yet either. <laughs> what an upgrade. Wow, I am just so, so pleased with that. It's just as slick. This adds almost no texture. Although, other than looks, there is a notable improvement from, from gunsmiths and gun manufacturers that these very micro brush strokes, of course they hold oil. And we're gonna, I'm gonna pull that out now and oil that bolt properly, but it holds oil. So it actually reduces friction rather than increase it, as you might think. From brutal offshore drilling platforms, all the way to the homeowner and hobbyist. Lincoln Electric's 125 years of experience provides the quality you need to get the job done right. The Newfoundland Hobbyist is sponsored by Lincoln Electric. Firearms have given me so many wonderful experiences. From this gorgeous, memorable morning here with my older brother looking for seals, to hiking the woods with my dad looking for a moose or, or hiking with, uh, with a buddy looking for small game. I sat in a tree stand recently with an, with an 80 year old man talking different stories, talking about our Lord and Savior. 
just incredible opportunities and memories firearms have provided. Now the next step of this project is to mount the scope. And I think you're gonna, you're gonna enjoy the scope choice for this one. Now the rings we have are made by Tally and they're the low. Now with this build, I wanted to get away from the multiple pieces here separating the scope and the action. I usually mount like a, like a rail or individual like weaver rail pieces. But uh, for this build, I want it to keep with a one piece, just one bridge between your rifle body and the scope body. These are beautifully machined bases. Really like them. Now I know you're curious what rifle scope did we choose for this package and it took a lot of consideration, a lot of research, budget in mind and, and what was available at the time in mind. I narrowed it down to two choices and I chose the Vortex Viper. This is a 4 to 12 by 40 mil objective lens. I had my choices down to this model right here and the VX Freedom from Leopold and I ended up choosing the Viper. Let's have a look here. And here it is, 4 to 12 Viper gives you a longer body which I like the look of. Nice long scope, it's still not real heavy. It has a, the Viper series has a parallax adjustment. Nice looking scope A. I love the 4 to 12 range. It's what I have on my 223 Savage. It's a Model 11. Now something else I really love about the Viper range, look how these numbers face you. Most scopes you have to get up over top of the scope and look down on your zoom ring in order to see what power you're on. But with this Viper series, it's looking straight at you and I just I think that's uh, that's really nice. Okay, here we go. This is super exciting for me. I would love to have a, a lapping rod to lap these rings, but just by initial assessment there, without that, there's no wobble, no gaps. Everything is pretty much seamless all the way around in the in the crest of those rings in the bottom of them, so. Now 40 mil objective is my favorite because it lets you mount your scope as low as possible. Now we're gonna have a little bit, a little bit higher mounted of a scope than I like. Now if you look at this space right here, in order to be most comfortable on your rifle, this should be as low as possible. So the bigger this objective end gets, so when you get a scope that's say a 40 mil versus a 42, a 50 mil, um, this N, that's the measurement of this N, it keeps getting bigger. So obviously the bigger the objective N, the farther your scope has to be off of the action or it won't clear, it'll be touching your barrel. Now my thought was, if I buy the low rings, I have the bulk here to mill these down. I don't know if that's a, that's a crazy idea or not. We want to take an eighth of an inch. So we're going to be going down, we're zeroed. I've moved away outside of my piece. We're going to go down, let's unlock my quill here, an eighth of an inch, which is 0.125 of an inch. So the quill is locked firmly, the Z axis, the main head is locked firmly. Now by my calculations, I have them within three thousandths of each other. The lulls of the two pieces. So we're going to zero out, subtract three thousandths, and do a face pass. Now this will be the, the smallest amount here.
Okay, let's try this again with that beautiful vortex. Oh, that's the fit we're looking for. Approximately an eighth inch. Could have even squeezed a sixteenth off of those uh, rings, but I didn't want to overdo it. Fall right under there, perfect. And now we're over at the leather working table because every rifle needs a good sling. If you don't, your, your hands are always occupied. And a lot of times, of course, you want your hands. You want a sling. So I have a beautiful piece of leather. I don't want any nylon or anything like that on this rifle. I want something heritage, something real nice. And for me, that's leather. To fit with this rifle, that's leather. So I have a beautiful leather blank here. I'm gonna cut it to length. I have a couple basic swivel mounts here. I really like these. I've tried lots of different types, more expensive ones, cheaper ones. I don't really find much of a difference. As long as they're not plastic, they're they're just fine. Now, any gun straps I've made in the past all had a, adjustments and stuff on them, but I just haven't found that they're usable. I don't change it out. I keep it on the one thing, and I have the one length I like, and that's what I stick with. Now, we have an inch and a half strap, and most of these are one inch, so obviously we're going to have to come in here on the end a little bit. I'm going to give myself one half of an inch. And then we'll come in a quarter inch on each side, of course. Now we'll use a stitch groover because I just love that nice, sharp, even line. Have a look at that. We're going with an understated look for this strap. I don't want anything to draw from the rifle. I don't want this to be the most exquisite strap in the world. Now we punch two holes wherever we want them. Thread this through. And now we can come through we use that to mark the back wherever we want it. So line it up left to right. You don't want it skewed. On enough material for your rivets. We'll go something like that right there. A couple pencil marks. Now black leather is what I'm feeling for this. It really seems like the, uh, the right choice. That's what I'm going with. Again, understated. I don't want the strap to be what catches your eye about the rifle. There's so much, so much more beauty there than for the strap to take up. Century Welding is an online Canadian outlet for premier welding and cutting machines, equipment, and related accessories and replacement parts. Shop for your welding machines and accessories, consumables, and even your safety apparel. The Newfoundland Hobbyist is sponsored by Century Welding. And there is our heirloom black leather strap on our heirloom rifle. And I am so very happy with this package. Metalwork.
machining, gunsmithing, leather craft, hunting, sport shooting, just a few of the topics explored in this episode that you can invest in through a passion for firearms. But what a gorgeous morning here and what a beautiful rifle. Very proud of this setup. Got it dialed in pretty good there now. I'll probably come and spend a little bit more time with it. Really enjoying it. The beauty of the 300 Winchester Short Mag is that you get almost identical um, ballistics pattern to the 300 Win Mag. So you get that power, you get that distance, but you don't get all the recoil. It's a bit similar to a 30 odd 6 in recoil. A little bit, little bit more than a 30 odd 6. But uh, still not fun to shoot over and over and over. But we aren't often doing that with a rifle in this caliber. For starters, it's real expensive. The bullets are real expensive. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you being here. I want to give a big shout out to my sponsors who helped make this show possible. I really appreciate it. If in any way you can support them, if you have need for their products, please choose them over some other makers. If you're looking for more content like this or maybe deeper information on this build, you can head over to YouTube, search up my name, Kyle Knowlesworthy. You'll be able to search through my catalog, all sorts of footage that you won't see here on TV. As always, make sure you tune in next week to the Newfoundland Hobbyist.